Hey, hey, my name is Matt Farley. I did about half of the soundtrack for Slingshot Cops, and now I'm going to walk you through every excruciating detail of that process. Um, first off, it's it's a buddy cop movie, and it's, it's got some 1980s uh, qualities to it. And in one way, when you think 80s uh, soundtrack, you think like Beverly's, Beverly Hills Cop or um, Fletch, you know, synth heavy. And Tom... Um, did all the synth stuff because he's good at that. So all the synth um, songs from Slingshot Cops, brilliantly done by Tom. But then, if you're me at least, um, if you're thinking about uh, 80, like earlier 80s, maybe slightly earlier 80s, even late 70s of, of these like cop movies, maybe it's some more jazziness going on, especially Clint Eastwood movies. Titles that come to mind like. Uh, the Enforcer? I, that might have been in the, the mid-70s, but uh, you know what I mean, right, Charlie? Yeah. yeah. Um, look it up. There's some Clint Eastwood movies from the late 70s, early 80s that have jazzier, kind of like, you know, free, like, uh, freer um, type of music. And uh, I'm, I'm not good at necessarily making jazz, but uh, that didn't stop me from trying. Um, and so that's what I was going for for, for the songs that I did. And we just kind of divided it up based on Charlie, who uh, who would put it all together, would say, this probably needs a Farley song. And he'd say, see what you can do for this scene. And um, and that's what I did. So right here, the opening the opening scene is what I did. And I came up with this little bass line that ends up being throughout the whole movie. Don't, 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 don't. Let's listen to some of that. So in case you're wondering, um, I you know all the instruments are being played by me on the keyboard, um, and and it's got to line up uh, with the action to some degree. And the 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 biggest thing that I have to worry about is don't let the music be too busy or too loud when there's dialogue happening. So I like have headphones on and I'm watching the scene and listening to the scene while I'm making the music, and uh, and just I have a pretty good idea of where the song's gonna go. But I'm also watching and waiting to make sure it's going to line up with each one of those moments. Um, and so to do that, for me, the easiest way to do it is start with a bass. So that, that bass line was the first thing I played. And um, we'll listen a little bit more. Okay, here's a new part. Dun, da, 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 da. So it's pretty simple little jazzy riffs going on with a you know a relatively good amount of instrumentation. The drums I'm doing through the keyboard, also the horns likewise, and it's just a matter of um, maintaining this jazzy cop vibe while um, while keeping with the action that's on the movie in uh, happening on screen and um and and this track kind of later on kind of like uh just slowly ends as the um the bad guys are spotting rusty as you can hear the music here is kind of slowing down and then just you know when you don't know what else to do you just let a note ring out because yeah, you're scoring to the action yes you know, these aren't just dropping in tracks right so i mean it's literally you know, some of it's written ahead of time, but um, but to some degree, it's written at, in actual response to what I'm seeing on the screen. You know what I mean? Not to be too uh, um, uh, grandiose about it, but that's no, great. When you're editing, that stuff saves everything and mixing too. It's just thank you. Now, at that moment, there's a little moment where, where they they find Rusty, and so I was like, all right, I can let me stop there so that I'm not lining up five straight minutes of action that uh, intricately. So then I have it that once, probably once the things are knocked over, um, the boxes, then boom. This is the only song that has a real guitar in it because I was trying to get a little bit more edgy excitement, and here it is.
So coming up here, coming up here in a moment, it's probably roughly when I go up to, to Charlie and say, uh, you stay here for, um, you stay here until I'm ready to come back and arrest you. It's probably right here because see, not much is going on musically. So it gives us a chance to hear what's happening. And then after that's happened, here comes the excitement again. One, two, three, four. So it's kind of, uh, it's a bit of a painstaking process because like, oh, I came in, I came in just a little too late. Is it close enough? Can I just let it go and hope Charlie doesn't say anything? <laughs> or, um, or do I fix it? And I, I swear I usually fix it. Um, but it, the, so the toughest part is getting that main track that, that hits all the right moments. And then once that happens, then I can build over it and, and, and if I make a mistake there, it's easier to just um, fix the second track. But like that first track you do has to be, has to be perfect, uh, you know, perfect as as perfect as as our stuff gets. <laughs> 